Who do you first? Great. Distribute the point two. So point one x equals point two times x is point two x. Point two times two is what? Point four. Four. So far so good. What can we do next? Sean? Good. We like to, uh, you know, if we have a variable and a number on one side, we like to, to cancel out the variable on that side that's on the same side as the number. And uh, when we do the same over here, then we'll wind up with x is on one side and numbers on the other. So we have a negative what? 1x. Point 1x. 0.1x. Equals 24 is the only thing left over here. Right, now we have negative point 0.1 times x equals point 0.4, so what do we do there? We add the point one x to each either side. Uh, add point one x. What is that going to give us on this side, Alex? Uh, a one x. It's going to give us a zero. Oh. Right. I add. I take a, a negative and I add the exact same. In fact, the opposite thing, the exact opposite, I'll get zero. Is that what you thought? Maybe should we try something else? What's, I mean, it's not wrong, but it is a little bit longer than it needs to be, Grady. Uh, divide point, negative point one. Divide by negative point one. Divide by negative point one. Okay, so what's negative point one divided by negative point one? We have one x. What's point four divided by negative point one? Yeah. Negative four. Negative four. Try. Uh, you can do point four divided by point one and leave the negative off because you know the answer is going to be negative positive divided by negative is negative. You can do long division. Um, you could, if I take this fraction 0.4 over 0.1, uh, and I multiply by 10 in the numerator denominator, okay. I can do that, right? Because what's 10 over 10? One. One. So just multiply by one, which doesn't change the value of this fraction at all. What is 0.4 times 10? <coughs> Four. Four. Mm -hmm. Right? You use the decimal over once, so you get 4.1 times 10 is 1. There you see, 4 over 1 is 4. 0.4 is four times bigger than 0.1. Right, so if I divide 0.4 by 0.1, I get four. If I divide 0.4 by negative 0.1, I get negative four. Okay. And what was our other one? Six, 16. 16. Trail mix. So the equation 4.05p. So that equation represents the number p of pounds of peanuts you can, uh, or that you need to make trail mix. How many pounds of peanuts do you need in trail mix? You didn't have to write the equation. It just gives us the equation. We just have to solve it for p. Alex? Uh, you distribute 4.5. Distribute 4.5. Okay, so 4.05p. Plus 14.4 equals uh, 4.5 times p is p is 4.5 p plus uh, 13.5. 13.5. Okay, and now what? Josie? Um, you just subtract 4.05 p from the 4.5. Just from the 4.5p? And from that side as okay, well. Okay, and also from this side. Okay, the reason we do 
be better is we're going to cancel out this 4.05p, right? So we get 14.4 equals uh, 4.5p minus 4.05p. Thank you very much. 0.45p plus 13.5. What's the problem? Minus 13.5, 1.45p. Yes, that's 14.4. What'd you say? 14.4 minus 13.5 is it point, it's point 0.9? Yeah. yeah. Don't ever make a mistake of being a math teacher in the calculator. Just as much doubting my ability as a math teacher. So 0 0.9 divided by 0.45, right? Divided by 0.45 on both sides. That, let's see, that's the same as 90 divided by 45. So that should be two, right? Mm -hmm. Two. What does that mean? Two pounds. Two pounds of? Peanuts. Four. For some trail mix. Number 24, unless there's questions. Shoot those questions right now, yeah, go ahead. of a, uh, I guess a, like a test tube. Okay, the bottom part of this is red and it says 45%. That represents red blood cells, I believe. Um, that's right. And 5.5 milliliters, milliliters of uh, plasma, that's your white blood cells. The amount of red blood cells, this guy right here, amount of red blood cells in a sample, so this is the sample, the whole thing, is equal to the total amount in the sample minus the amount of plasma. So what is the total amount X of blood drawn? So if I were to look at all of that, that would be X, the number of milliliters. Okay? So we need to write an equation that expresses what it just said. right? The amount of red blood cells Okay, well how much red blood cells do I have? 45%. Forty five percent of what? X. Of X. How do I show forty five percent of X? Sean? Uh forty point point four five X is forty five percent of whatever the number X is, right? Okay. So the number of red blood cells is equal to is equal to the total number, or the total amount in the sample, what's the total amount in the sample? X. X is the total amount of the sample. Look at that, we have X on the other side of the equation too. That's the whole deal, right? That's the whole, the, the, the catch here. Minus the amount of plasma. How much plasma is there? 5.5. 5.5. Now we have not too bad of an equation. How would we solve this equation? Alex? You could divide 4.45 on either side. You could. I'm going to say that we won't. And there's actually, we're going to talk about it here in a minute. You could, but it's, it's more involved than people think. Because I see that a lot. Okay? So we could, we're just going to hold off on it, and I'll show you why in a minute. Uh, Monica. Add 5.5 to both sides. Add 5.5 to both sides. Okay. okay. So we have 0.45x plus 5.5. Standing over here because my tablet is being weird. Uh, equals x. Okay, now what?
Grady? Minus 4.5 on each side. So is that a little bit off? Minus what? 4.5x. Try again. Or 0.4. There you go. Minus 0.45x. Minus 0.45x. Uh, so four, four, point four five x minus point four five x is zero. Here we have five point five equals x minus point four five x is point fifty five x divided by point five five. Okay, we've been doing this a while. I think once we get to number times x equals a number. It should be our, just be second nature to do what at that point? Once you have number times x equals number, you just kind of instinctively, reflect, reflexively do what? Divide. Divide. Right? Divide by 0.55, whatever being multiplied by x. Okay, so 5.5, this is uh, this is 10 times bigger than that number there, isn't it? Yeah. Multiply that by 10, and that's it's 10 times bigger. So we should get 10. Am I right? Yep. 10 is x. 10 milliliters. Great. I am going to go here. I'm going to back it up. I'm going to go to G. G. No, F, right? No, G. G. each other first, well, I guess you decide. What are we going to write equations for first, the area or the perimeter of grading? Uh, I do perimeter. Alright, perimeter. So show us how the perimeter goes. All you do, I just start at the left little box. This one? Yeah, did one. Plus one. Okay, one plus x. Plus one. Okay, so one plus x plus one plus So 1 plus x plus 1 plus, what's this right here? X. Who said x? Why is it x? Because 10 is the same. What's the same as what? Just because you look at it and it looks the same? Yeah. Well, it's a good place to start. But we, we are mathematicians. We're going to be absolutely certain that that has to be x. And there's no way that somebody drew this picture really poorly and just made it look like it's x, right? Josie, why do you um, know that it has three x on top and there's two x's on the bottom. So, so three x is here, two x right there is accounted for in those two rectangles. What's left if this is three x, which it naturally is because it's a rectangle. Here is an x, there's an x, so this must be a third x. Right. So plus x plus one, because there's one right there. Uh, I'm just gonna I have these kings worked out. There we go. So I don't know where my pen is. So we're here. One plus x plus 1 plus x plus 1 plus x again plus 1 plus, what's this? 3. 3 plus this side. 3x. X plus that next side. 3 plus 1. Very good. Very good. I already did that one. So we're all the way around. What's that? So we went all the way around and we'll clean it up. We've got uh, x, 2x, 3x, 6x. One, two, three, four, uh, seven, ten. Six x plus ten. Okay? Now we need the area of this big guy, this little guy here, and this little guy here, and we add them all up, right? How big is this? Three x. Three x times three. So how big is that? Nine x. 
What's the area of this guy? 1x. 1x, so just x. And this one? x. x. So we have 9x plus x plus another x. The area and the perimeter values, not the units, but the numbers, just the numbers, are equal to each other. So 11x equals 6x plus 10. Next. Uh, yeah. Six, six, six x. Five x equals 10. Our instincts kick in. Divide by five. Uh, I guess I'll put an arrow. X equals two. Is that the question? No. No, the question is, what's the area and what's the perimeter? This is the interruption. The following students need to report to their second period class when the bell rings. Take attendance and then come straight to the high school library. High school. Uh, six times two plus 10, 12 plus 10, 22. Naturally, it's 22, just like the area. Because they're the same. Their values are the same. Now, this 22 is in inches, no, feet, I think, feet. Squared and this is in feet. Okay. Uh, so here's an example of a mistake that I'm seeing a lot, and I want to help you to not make it. Okay. So let's talk about it quickly. Look at the work, and in the blue step, what mistake does Richie make? Just think about it for a minute. Ponder. Johnny, what do you say? Uh, from the, so he, multi, he divided by 8x and 2x. If we have that equation, you're supposed to divide by the side. So you wouldn't get rid of it. You say, um, get rid of it. Subtract it by 2x and then subtract it. So, so he should have subtracted 2x. Yeah. Should have uh, not divided by 2? Yeah. His mistake was dividing by 2? Have in here a prediction. A prediction of, of what you would say was the mistake that he made divided by two. Okay? Now, is dividing by two a mistake? Is it wrong to divide by two? You just have to divide the whole side by two. Right, we've talked about this before. If you were to divide by two, you would have to divide everything by two. Now, in this problem, it's not so bad. It would look like this 4x equals x, right? 2x divided by 2 would be x. It wouldn't disappear. I see it disappear sometimes because you're just hoping that it'll disappear. Then you would subtract x from both sides. 3x equals negative 12 and x equals negative 4 when you divide by 3 on both sides. Yes, this is wrong, right? You got it wrong. This is correct. If you divide by 2 on both sides, you have to divide everything by 2, all right? Now, could we have done this differently? Did Johnny start to walk us down a different road? Yes. Yeah, you could have subtracted 2x from both sides, which would have given you 6x equals negative 24. Okay, divide by 6 on both sides, what do you get? Negative 4. Negative 4, negative 4. Ah, same solution, two different approaches. Okay, the reason why I would suggest that you go this way is because doesn't always work that nicely. Like, what if I had this situation, 6x equals 5x plus uh, 12. If I choose to divide right now, perfectly fine, but this is what happens. Divide by 5, divide by 5, I'll get 6 fifths x equals x plus 12 fifths. See where I'm going? Let's just forget it. Forget that. Make it easier. Not correct. This is not wrong. It's just a hassle. Don't make it a hassle on yourself. Instead, subtract 5x from both sides. And you know what? You're done. Because 6x minus 5x is 1x. So x would be 12. All right. Let's put everything away.